Hey everybody, I'm um, just going to talk today about uh, doing business in the Philippines and setting up your own company. Um, first thing I would say about doing business is it's not what you're going to expect. And the reason I say that is because most people that come out of the Philippines to do business are not business people. Um, that leads to expectations which are not going to happen. Um, the first one being the 40% ownership, which a lot of companies are, where you can only retain 40%. Uh, then you're going to have so many Filipinos, including the treasurer, controlling your money. Um, that's one of the big problems for many of the businesses in the Philippines. Um, it's why it's the country stays the way it does, because control is retained by Filipinos. Um, obviously, if you're Filipino, you don't have that problem. And if the business is in your wife's name, you don't have that problem. But at the same time, also, expats go down the same routes every time. Internet calves, uh, pig breeding, uh, vulcanizing shops, which are like tire changes, uh, car repairs, jeepney routes, um, internet services. That'll, they would be the main ones that I know people do. Now, the first thing with anything to do with the livestock, you've got to understand it. And the fact that the animal feeds are um, a constant problem is corrupt. The system's not designed to make you money. It's designed to make the animal feeds companies money. Um, the same with vets. Vets fees. Um, medication is a bit excessive. They're, the prices are too high. It's very, very difficult for a farmer to make money. Now, the joke being here... There's a lot of corruption, which is an ongoing thing. For example, the people producing rice, you will find that people produce rice, not making a lot of money, then other people will buy the rice, hoard it in a warehouse, then sell it in a month's time for 10% profit. That is typical Filipino business. Very difficult to do, if, because as a foreigner, it's illegal. And it's illegal for Filipinos to do it. The difference is, because of the level of corruption, a lot of the a lot of this stuff doesn't really get um, flagged up. It would do it, good chance it would do if it was you. Um, the same goes for um, the the internet cast. I set up one as roughly the same time as a a friend of mine. He got raided the first um, week he opened, and then the second week, first time was to check his licensing for Microsoft and the second one was for not having a mayor's permit. I never got bothered about the licensing although I do have licenses for all my machines and I didn't get bothered about the mayor's permit. We had asked for it and they told us to come back in a few months when, when they process the next batch. Now there's a reason it's different. The first one is he was an American guy wanting to run the business, you know, as his own business. Me, I don't sit at the front of a business and promote it as my own. I sit in the background. The next is we're a bit inner. Uh, you know, it's like inside a community where his was on the main road. His business actually got up and running, did okay, then he sold it on uh, due to some family problems. But at the same time, I'm never 100% what people actually make on a business because people don't tell the truth very often, especially expats. Um, no expat would tell you his business was failing. They're always doing great. Um, that's one of the businesses that can go well or can fail, depending on location and headaches with the, the local officials. Keep it all above board and it could work well. In the same way, if it's in the wrong location, you won't make a lot of money. Me. My location wasn't great, so I put them on slot machines. Um, it's not for gambling, by the way. They were, they basically they're in arcade boxes where they could. Um, it just sets the timer for the computer, so that the kids and whatever they just pay. It's not monitored. They ju they just come and play on the computers. Very easy system. Put two or three of those outside. You can make money on those um, without too much headaches. You still need permits though. Um, now. The next next type of business I'd say is the internet one. That is probably the one you can have more control over. Um, 
it's not easy to do if you don't understand the internet. Um, like these YouTube videos can make a bit of money. They're not going to make you rich. Uh, right now I'm just testing them to see if I can be bothered to do this every month. Um, but the fact is, blogging can make money. Doing these types of videos can make money. Um, photography can, if you know how to do it. Um, but for an online presence, it's best to combine all of them. Because um, they work hand in hand with each other. Um, Ebooks is something a lot of people do. It's not something I'm really into. Um, I've, I've written a few, but I haven't really bothered to market them because it's not, it's not something... I've, a lot of the stuff that people produce is just too much common sense to me. I, it sort of irritates me that somebody would actually need a guide for some of this stuff. But that's, you know, that's up to people. Um, for me, I'm not 100% on it, but I know other people find the information useful. And I also know several people that produce the ebook stuff. So I can't really comment on it. Yes, it can make money. Yes, it can make very good money. Is it value for money? Some of it, I would say no. Um, but at the same time, when you speak to a few people, they say they found it useful because they're different. You know, they're very different to me. They were these are guys in their 60s that have never been outside the US where I lived most of my life abroad when I was a kid um, so I've had more opportunities than they have so a lot of stuff is just run-of-the-mill stuff to me where they they find it like the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy you know <laughs> it's full of useful information um, so yeah ebooks is one of those things but the other thing with this is um, you don't need to be in the Philippines to do it. Blogging is something you could do anywhere on the planet. These videos, I'm sat right now in my parents' lounge. Um, it's not the best scenario to be sat, sat here. But um, I'm just starting work again uh, in the UK. So I'm just setting things up here. Because um, eventually I'll set up a small studio. But that's what one of the reasons I'm testing is to see if anybody can be bothered to listen to my videos. Because um, although these are about the Philippines at the moment, I've got other ideas to talk about. Um, a lot of it's to do with motivation and business-related things. But there is a market for different things. Niche markets, like the clothing, are markets where you can develop something into. Um, which gets me onto the clothing. The reason I brought up clothing, um, in the Philippines, if you're in a town, they normally have a good skill set. There's something that is very unique to that town. Where I am in Mingonelia, it's tailoring, it's, um, it's seamstress work, so pretty much any clothing can be made from wedding dresses to suits to children's clothing. There is artisans here. Um, they're not expensive. And if you go with the right age group, because this is, this is a funny thing, is I don't want to employ the young people. Uh, I may sound a bit harsh on that. But if I could have seamstresses like in their 40s, 40s upward, they're going to be reliable. They're not going to be whining about things. They know what to expect. They're ha happy to have the job. Um, they're going to turn up in time. They don't have boyfriend problems. Um, and, I want, you know, these are the sort of things I look for. Um, because a lot of the jobs you see advertised, they don't want anybody over 35. If their age group is a bit low, they hop around. Um, that's, these are just observations, by the way. But getting back on tangent... Um, each town has something that's unique. Clothing is one of the ones Minganelia has. Now, custom-made suits is something that we recently started, and already we got interest in it. And the reason I like custom-made suits is the good fit, I can get the right quality, and I can reduce the price. Because cause I'm not interested in having a label. We may create our own label later on, but the, the fact is, I don't buy... I'm not a Nike person, for example. Nike doesn't represent anything to me anymore. Um, when I was a kid, it was like quality, good items. But most of this stuff is out in China now, and the quality has gone down the toilet. 
um, the laptops I'm sat on here. This Dell is just over a year old. It's failing. It's overheating. Processor's already shot. Hard drive's already been replaced. And the same goes for uh, HP and Toshiba. Toshiba used to be manufactured in the Philippines. And I think the, the one I had back then, uh, the, it lasted seven years. And then I sold it. These days, these these laptops are lucky to last two without having problems. And what do I know though? Well, there's five of them in this room. Um, now, this is where a lot of people don't see a niche market. They don't understand this is where the money is. Because people like me will buy something that is worth buying. I will buy custom made suits. I will buy high quality pens. I will buy a bag that's made to measure and has the extra pockets on it. I will buy a bag that I know has an extra bottom on it to protect it. Uh, isn't going to have wheels fall off it if it's a suitcase or something like that. I'll buy shoes that are going to last me 10 years and rather pay the extra because I'll go with a timeless design. And these are the th niche markets which are getting thrown to one side um, and that's where you can make money in the Philippines it's not an easy startup you gotta find the right people you gotta find the people that understand the business and how to export these goods but at the same time there is lots and lots of skilled labor out there um, the new generations don't get the same training or uh, opportunities as far as I'm, I'm looking um, the reason I think that's happening is like uh, car car with its shoe industry. It's in decline. It can't compete with China that's producing this mass produced crap in China. Um, so the artisans are becoming unemployed. The company's downsized, so you don't get a next generation that can produce high quality. So, from my, my point of view, these industries are worth preserving because A, they could be profitable. Um, the first thing is with custom made clothing it doesn't have to be cheap um, if you go down the cheap route don't bother because if a guy that can have, was employing 400 people to produce um, shoes can't compete with a company in China why do you think you can when he's been doing it for generations but if you had a factory with five people in it making custom one-off shoes, making custom one-off jackets, making um, whatever it is, because the, the thing is, this is where you just need to think of what can you do, um, because there's always a niche market for very good quality stuff. Um, a friend of mine, he does cigars. He Well, sorry, he used to do cigars when he was in the Philippines. You know the big, big cigars that are rolled on the thighs of... Um, local women for the the South Korean market that is a custom made product you know in a nice presentation box high end good quality and that's the same that goes with suits it goes with bags it goes with shoes it goes with pen holders it goes with pens it goes for, for iPod holders iPhone covers anything don't look at the one dollar market look at the high end and the way I justify high end is I buy I use Parker pens. Um, I don't use cheap pens. A good Parker pen will last me probably the same lifetime I have in my own body. Um, if you buy one dollar pens, you'll buy like ten for you know ten for a pound, ten for a dollar. I don't know what the U.S. rates are, but they they disappear very quickly. Um, because you put them down, so, you know, uh, it doesn't happen with a Parker generally because you don't have 20 of them, so you generally look after your pen and you put it in your clipboard or whatever. Um, but if you have lots of cheap pens, you leave them lying around and stuff, and eventually you lose all of them. Um, also, you, you get the uh, ink blotting at the end, ink flow doesn't work properly. Don't get any of those problems with the Parker. So, Parker pen, the cheap one, might cost you $14, but I can guarantee you it will last 10 plus years, if not more. Um, because, firstly, you can buy more ink, 
but generally they're good pens you know they're, they're I, I would expect to give my kids my pens at some point um, because the quality is that there uh, obviously I can't hand my suits on to my kids but I could hand them on to somebody else later on because they're all very nice suits high quality materials um, same with bags and things like that and that's the difference between um, a niche quality market and mass market mass market is when I sell you a suit that will last 6 to 12 months that works for somebody who wears a suit once a year you know sorry once a decade you know they it might be for a wedding but for people who work in an office that wear suits every day they might have 10 suits that they wear regularly you know every month they wear all of them now they're hard wearing hard, high quality and they might want an extra pocket you know just to put on the inside just for a small phone or maybe they got something you know they keep a small coin purse there or there's something you know or they got a stitch for um, a card for the rail card or something you know I'm just giving an idea why you'd have an extra pocket but getting a custom-made suit means you can have custom-made pockets um, you can have the length adjusted if you're like me very broad in shoulders where I have this have this problem where I don't know if I can get this over here I've got very big arms there's not a lot of fat here um, putting a suit on or sorry not only a suit a shirt my my forearms normally get trapped because they're they're very muscular um, my forearms about the same size as my bicep so then I have very stocky shoulders and you know and my you know it's all very hard here it's not it's like I look like a bouncer a lot of the time a security guy <laughs> when I put a suit on but getting a custom made I have to do it you know I you know if you're short short fat if you're tall um, long-legged got one arm whatever you can have suits made to measure those people will always buy suits um, because it actually costs more to have them adjusted than it would be buying the suit one, uh, custom made one off from somebody in the Philippines and that's why we've we've started doing it ourselves but I, re I just wanted to make this a quick video just to give you an idea of some of the stuff you can look at um, if you're not a business person I would say don't bother um, you're gonna struggle and you're gonna lose money you're gonna be unhappy you're gonna be stressed um, if you're not used to doing business don't do it but I would also say wherever you are now many of the things that you're thinking of doing you can do right from where you're set um, like I'm saying I do these YouTube videos I'm just testing this at the moment because if it works I'll actually set up a small studio but this is a prime example I'm sat at my parents house I'm sitting here doing the videos um, I do blogging but I'm actually cutting back on that because now I'm in the UK at the moment there's not a lot to blog about in the Philippines and we I've hit about 6,000 articles now so I'm sort of hitting writer's block uh, because there's not really a lot to discuss anymore and I don't want to keep recycling stuff it's not you know it's a part of my life I've done um, and I might start writing about the UK on a separate blog but at the same time things have moved on so uh, these are the these are what I'm still doing these videos obviously but the videos are a different thing because like discussing this is very hard to do in a blog post um, because it, it's, this is more descriptive anyway let me know what you think but I would say try and do business where you are now with some small stuff to try and get into understanding how business works and the headaches that come with it because you do it now it will become easier later um, also if you find you fail now you may not want to do it later so good luck with your businesses and Philippines isn't an easy place to do business in and you're probably gonna do better where you are now unless you can find a niche okay thank you